welcome back to my channel thank you for joining us once again a bit of cook admin why are you not subscribing why are you not watching our videos why are you not liking or sharing our videos if you haven't done so please do please like please subscribe and share our videos thank you to the people who consistently watch my videos and keep liking i highly appreciate that and i have one just one request please would you guys engage with me in the comment section i'd highly appreciate that i want to know what you guys are thinking maybe you think differently maybe you have actually tips and tricks better than mine and that you could teach me a thing or two always open for the engagement and learning right right so today's video as you will see from the title is travel prep uh, preparation and i'm going to literally focus on accommodation in this particular video i will however do other videos for uh, flight preparation uh, activities etc uh, your travel clinic for uh, international trips uh, in other videos so for now let's focus on the accommodation today's video will focus on your typical average south african consumer who'd like to do a local trip and is at the stage of booking their accommodation so personally i use i just have some notes let me grab my notes so personally i use for for booking accommodation i use booking.com it's my go-to i've used rooms for africa i've used airbnb i've used even like back in the day when we were students where to stay to check out certain things but i'd do a lot of research and i check the same property on the different sites to see if the offering is the same the reviews are almost standardized etc etc but yeah people have different things people some people use travel agents or use instagram there's a lot of places where you can find decent accommodation just make sure that it's safe that you've checked it on um various uh, maybe social medias platforms uh and yeah just just make sure you're not going to a dodgy place okay safety first so as i said i use for example booking.com so booking.com i'm just going to open it up here but before we do that let's just get some context of this video this video is aimed at your working class your middle class and also i think to be a little bit more inclusive i'd bring it down to a lower lsm let's say you're earning maybe only ten thousand rand a month or eight thousand rand a month because we do live in a country where there's a high unemployment rate so a lot of people would like to prioritize travel but they don't have enough um income or that's what they think they don't have they think they don't have enough money for actually prioritizing travels and spoiling themselves to a trip like once a year so for me if you're in a lower lsm group i would advise that your goal your travel goal should be one big trip a year obviously in your middle and uh, middle class you need to do maybe two trips a year two three trips a year and obviously the trips vary and also vary in the uh, expenditure and obviously higher lsm mod oh I, I would i would i would think someone in higher lsm would have like maybe seven eight trips a year right be it a weekend away a proper vacation like it would definitely be a combination so let's stick to um someone who can only afford to prioritize one big trip a year and people who can afford like three maybe three four trips you know a year so that is the focus for this year uh, not for this year sorry for this video so that's the focus for this video We're looking at the lower into middle class lsm consumers doing a local trip so when you are booking when you think of booking like i said you're going to have a platform that maybe you are comfortable with that you have used and you are first going to check what this platform is offering you and if it works for you if it does not work for you don't use it so i use booking.com it's the go-to for me i've booked multiple times and it works so i have my other phone over here i will however try to put a video on the side if i can of maybe what i'm doing it might i'm not i might not be speaking in the same order but it's gonna work for you guys so i've opened up my booking.com app right and i've typed in the eastern cape and i've typed in i think maybe for many five nights from like the 10th to 15th of october sometime and it's opened up what is called there i think it's called uh kronen hof guest house right it's got a four star rating and this particular place has a breakfast included on on just like the face of the um app before you actually go into it so i'm gonna go into the app over there right as you open up the app you'll see there's some pictures of the guest house uh the facilities that they have right and when you scroll down you'll see the price because i'm on a genius level obviously my price is reduced when you're starting obviously you're not going to have the certain uh reduction and your price 
your your prices are dependent on how many times you travel, what level you're on. So those are just like the minimum, the the few benefits of using the Booking.com. So you scroll down and you'll see that there's a 9.0 superb rating, and they have 94 uh, detailed reviews. If you check there, the breakfast is rated 8.6, 9.4, 9.3, right for comfort and cleanliness. If you go down, you'll find that there's a description section, okay. And basically, if you read that, you'll just get an idea of the place, maybe the history and the background to just get a feel for the place. If you go down, you're going to see what facilities they have. I always check the facilities of an accommodation that I'm booking because it's important to know that if you cannot afford activities, at least they have something that you can do at that place and still enjoy yourself. So they have their a swimming pool, right, room service, private parking. If you are driving to a certain place, you want to know that, okay, your car is going to be safe. Do they have the capacity to keep your car on the property? And also, it's nice to know if you have Wi-Fi. Right. Some people go to go on a trip because they want to do adventure, etc. Some people want to rest, and when they're resting, they still want to have access to like Wi-Fi, so they can go on their social media or watch something or do whatever it is. So it's always nice to see. If it's check there, if you see more, you'll see that the pets are not allowed. If you go into more, internet Wi-Fi is available. And general, your general section is so important because it helps you understand sometimes. What do they have in the rooms? They'll say that there's room service, pack lunches, non-smoking rooms, heating facilities for disabled guests, non-smoking, etc. And if it's a self-catering, also you need to know, do they have an iron? Do they have like a fully equipped kitchen so that when you are making your meals, that is that you can actually do that. They have activities, food and drink, um, outdoors, pool, wellness. So if you guys are not going out, there's a pool, you guys can enjoy the pool over there. Babysitting, cleaning services, etc. If you go out of them, um, I like to quickly go check like the reviews or check my options. So if you go into your see your options, you're able to see what rooms they have available. And I like to go into those pictures. So if you see on the side, if you check that lodge luxury double twin room, um, it will have pictures on the side. They are go there to just kind of see um, what does the room look like. The disadvantage of doing that is that some other rooms. Um, they'll use the same pictures for all the rooms so you actually don't know which room you're going to get but some are very very good and they specify if you're booking this room this is what the room looks like and I appreciate that because then you know to manage your expectations to not expect something and then get disappointed so I always check on that particular room is their breakfast included right and also for me i cannot share a bathroom i don't like shared bathrooms so i always check for breakfast included in the price is there a shared bathroom and obviously if you're looking for a tv you'll have a tv in there and they, they'll they just have specifications you will check for what you need and if it's a self-catering you want to know in the facilities that they have everything they have a bride they have a kettle and iron when you're, when you're on vacation, you need to be ironing your clothes. Can't be stepping out and, you know, your stuff is uh, crumbled and it's not neat, etc., etc. So that's what I ideally check. And I also prefer to pay like now. I don't like to reserve a room and not pay. When you're not good with your finances, you'd rather pay. And then I'll go back out and then obviously go read the reviews. So reviews are very, very, very nice because what you can learn is if there's an issue per se let's just run up to the reviews because they have 90 how many i think they have 94 yeah going to the reviews over there and then when you read it says location is ideal very clean very neat um bad comment there was nothing bad because you have a rating you have a smiley face and a sad face sad face you can write what you wish the property to improve on um their on on, on their accommodation so someone there um commented Good value for money rooms are great food excellent someone said very neat on all in all you would expect from a place stay, uh, to stay away from home and for me i love absolutely love the good ratings but the bad ratings are so important because sometimes they may highlight an issue that is um maybe direct to you i remember once booking and i was trying to check all the reviews and there's only one lady who said you know what? um the only thing that she didn't like was the mere fact that the place didn't have irons okay you need to have an iron in the compartment so you can iron your clothes because when you're traveling and you fold up everything into your bag some some outfits you can't just directly wear out of your travel bag so i was like okay this might not be for me or it's either that or i have to pack in an iron when i'm traveling and some things you just don't want to pack in right so that's what you do you go through all these reviews and you review Yes, there'll always be some bad reviews that where you can see like this, 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 this traveler is just like maybe just being a little bit petty, but it's important to go through the reviews. There is a general feel and a general um, 
a general complaint, if I may say. If there's something very bad, most guests will complain about that. And also, it's the response of the accommodation to the bad, uh, maybe, reviews that also gives you a sense of what kind of people are you dealing with. If they, if they, if they don't care to respond or to maybe say, you know what, we apologize, we just don't have the capacity to provide that. That's why we have stated in our facilities that we do not offer a particular kind of thing. It's important to check out those reviews to make sure that when you are booking, you're booking the right thing. Also, cancellation policy, you guys are not checking. Cancellation policy is very important. Sometimes you book an accommodation, maybe you have an emergency or something more immediate comes up. You need to be able to know if, are you going to get your money back? If you guys are not checking cancel uh, cancellation policies, you're going to run into a problem. Sometimes you try to cancel and then you lose your money i only lost money for one booking but i didn't care because it was more of a road trip so i was only staying one night there when i cancelled i cancelled in time but i didn't get um the cancellation fee and i also didn't follow up on it but you need to follow up on it it's not nice to pay uh, for something and then when you cancel in time you still don't get your refund so cancellation policy is so 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 important another thing i look for in an accommodation that i book where is it situated is it close to the airport is it close to other maybe i'm a sightseeing kind of girl if i'm traveling i want to learn you know i want to have like a cultural experience so if you are literally 50 uh, kilometers out and there's nothing in the surrounding i'm ideally not going to take that because i want a place where i can actually explore and i travel i want to learn cultures i want to see things i want to meet people i want to go to a local market i want to go to a famous restaurant i want to go to a museum so if your accommodation is not it's not around those type of things and i ideally don't like to book it because i always like to bring my costs right down okay make sure that if i'm booking a place we can literally walk to certain places or if we're taking an uber taxi fire or having to have like arranged transport it won't take us more than like 30 40 minutes to get there like at max like took us like 15 20 minutes to get to places as the beach far if you're going to a place where you'd like to experience the beach then you're going to be booking an accommodation that's too far out so those are the type of things you need to be thinking about when you are booking accommodation the facilities what they have on hand is it fully equipped to what you need and your needs are you going to be cooking or do you want a place where they offer you breakfast and supper that i like because then you don't have to cook you can just stress about lunch and usually during the day you out so you're going to be buying lunch at that market or buying lunch at a restaurant or whatever or wherever you may be and yeah so that's that's the basis is there is there are there museums is the nature reserve close by is it is it mobile can i get there can i quickly get to my accommodation on arrival if i'm flying down is it close to the airport etc etc so that's very important to think about when you're looking at accommodation now to actually book the accommodation so you're earning eight thousand rand you don't have enough money what can you do in january uh, you're going to log on to booking.com airbnb or whatever you use and you're going to check okay so i want to go to cape town you type in Cape Town the number of nights and then you see okay maybe the average amount that you need depending on where you're booking are you booking a hotel are you booking a BNB are you booking a guest house or you're booking someone who's just renting out the apartment maybe let's just stay for five nights you're gonna pay close to seven thousand right that's not a hotel price but I'm just saying the average pricing of these guest houses depending if it has uh, bed and breakfast or whatever is like maybe seven let's say seven thousand for two adults so what are you guys going to do if it's either if you're going by yourself you're going to break it up in jan you're going to save and then you're going to save half of the money in fact you're going to settle the accommodation that's what i do if the type of person is only going to go for two nights then maybe your cost might even end up being just like three thousand for two nights so what you're going to do in jan when you're earning that eight thousand you either put um three thousand away you just settle at the same time or you put half and you pay some people are like they're not good with saving money so what do what is the last last resort so what you can also do is if you're going to travel down you can actually but it, this is rather risky you can pay for two nights first secure those two nights and then the next month try to pay for another two nights so that you make sure you've actually paid you don't have any money on hand for you to actually use but the danger comes in when you can't get the same accommodation on those dates because people are traveling and places do get booked don't, don't be fooled. places do get booked so if you're going to book late you're not going to get an ideal booking you're not going to find a nice place to stay in so in jan at the end of the month you'd maybe put money aside and you'd actually pay like let's say it's three thousand right so out of that eight thousand you know ish, i'm gonna have to sacrifice either three thousand or else i'm gonna put away 1.5 and at the end of February, i'm gonna put away another 1.5 or two thousand and pay for my accommodation right once you've paid for your accommodation it goes off of your account you can then start talking to the property owner and then let them know okay this is when i'll be arriving what do you have at your facility what would i need to bring if it's a self-catering you ask do you have an iron 
uh, do you have an ironing board, do you have this, do you have plugs, do you have this in your kitchen, is it fully equipped, can, is there a stove, can I bake, can I cook, is there a fridge, because we're going to be buying food and we obviously you need a refrigerator, you need to put in your meat, you need to put in your things like your milk and stuff, so you always communicate with the property manager who's readily available on the app, so you guys can communicate, and then you find out also from them, are there things to do in the surrounding, in your message DMs, um, yes, there is a nature reserve near us, there is a market, there's this, 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 and then you start planning around it. And some guest houses, not just hotels, have like um, facilities like a spa. You start asking them, how much is that? Can you prepay? It's always good to communicate with the property owners because they also, they also most, all, all, all the property owners that I've dealt with are amazing because obviously I'm a client and bringing in money. So whenever I ask them, they're very attentive, they answer really quickly and they can prepare things. Some of them are very strict, obviously, because it is their property. It's if their business is certain things they just don't allow you just make sure if that doesn't work for you if you can't come and go if there's a curfew and you don't like that then you book a different place but you always make sure you prepay so you prepay for your accommodation within the first three months so that in the following months you focus on flights and um activities well i hope this has been opening eye for you guys especially all the people who think they cannot travel so like i said if you're earning less money you're going to start reserving money from jan if you're saving 2000 in jan 2005 and then the remaining 2000 in march 6000 rand you can afford to stay at a decent place using booking.com um options right it doesn't have to be a hotel can be a guest house can be a lodge go some people are renting out apartments or their cottages but they have like a nice facility um for like someone who is traveling so you save in those months and you pay your accommodation in march your accommodation is done once your accommodation and your flights are done listen you have mastered the art of just like going on travels right and yeah that's how you begin so we've done our accommodations in this video if there's any specific questions you have with regards to booking accommodations like a local accommodation maybe a site or maybe cross-referencing them checking if they are safe and stuff you guys are more than welcome to comment in the section if some of you know better sites for booking accommodations i'll also appreciate that thank you for having uh, me and joining me on this video please like subscribe and share the video if you haven't done so see you in the next video